How did you get in the Navy as a 15 year old? I don't know if the recruiting officer overlooked when I filled out the papers. I scratched out 1927, put 25, handed it to the guy, never said a word. They called me the kid. I thought that I was pretty tough when I first went in. It didn't take me long to find out you're nothing. Now, you get to Hawaii, and as I understand it, they assigned you to a troop ship. Yes. They unloaded the troops. We were heading back to Hawaii. And as we were leaving that area, they called it Iron Bottom Bay, because so many ships were sunk there. So as we were starting out, we got torpedoes. And you know, what do I know about torpedoes? All I heard was abandoned ship, abandoned ship. Well, I didn't have any idea. So I was watching everybody else, and when they jumped over the side, I followed. There were fires on top of the water because the oil that you used crude oil on the ship, and that oil was all on fire. So in boot camp, they teach you to take off your life jacket, hold on to it, and dive down under, and then come up for air. And as you come up, you push that away. Fortunately, I didn't have to go too far. So I put my jacket on, and the next thing I know, I found a life raft whether they found me or I found them. And I started to get inside and I said, no, that's for the wounded. And they had a couple of wounded guys inside of it. So how long were you in the water? I don't remember. Two, three weeks. Two or three weeks? At least two, I know it. So but how, did, you how see, did they take care of you? While we were so lucky, they still had seaplanes. So they flew over us because no ship could stop because the submarines in the area. So these PBYs were dropping storage on us. Some of us fell on each side. So we had food and water and a canopy, and you hooked it over to get out of the sun. How were you rescued? You, everybody went to sick bay, make sure you were all right. And they fed us. And we thought, you know, at least we're going back to state survivors. No way. And it's about this time you got word that the USS Wasp? A couple of days later, we got word that the Wasp was hit. And they wanted a ship to go alongside and pick up survivors because they knew it was going to sink. So like I say, you stand in line when you're the shortest, it's you. You, you, and you. That's their idea of volunteer. Back we went, put us on a destroyer. We went alongside. We didn't even get to tie up. We got hit again, and this time I got blown off. So I didn't have to swim through anything. When I came to, if I was out, there was a fragment of something in the water, and I held on, and fortunately there was a raft close by. So I swam over to it. I never did think that we would ever get hit that much and survive. Uh, when you signed on to the Salt Lake, they looked at it and said, boy, you're bad luck. <laughs> and you said, no, I'm good luck. I survived twice. <laughs> How old were you when you signed up? 18. Okay. I, I wanted to go when I was 17. My mother wouldn't let me. I know we're going back 80 years in time, but... Can you remember what it felt like the first time you saw this heavy cruiser with all its guns? Well, I thought uh, that they couldn't win the war without me. I was ready for the Salt Lake City. I didn't know it was an old ship before the war. It looked like an old broken down ship to me. And once I got aboard and got familiar, it was like home. And they had put the radar on and stuff and uh, all that. I don't think many people know what the role of a storekeeper is. Well, we sold mostly uh, toothbrushes and uh, 
uh, toothpaste and stuff like that and uh, candy. That's what the storekeepers do. The Navy pays twice a month. First thing I do is go down and go get my gee dunk and ice cream. Gee dunk was ice cream. Pogey bait was candy. And the storekeepers were over it. I was a, a storekeeper and I was selling it in the uh, store that we had on the ship. The ship was designed for 500 men and like 50 officers in peacetime. When I went aboard, there was 150 officers and 1,000 men. The bunks went from three to five. If you slept in the top bunk, you'd have to climb over these. Uh, and once you got in, if you wanted to turn over, you had to get out and go back. If you slept on the bottom bunk, everybody was stepping on And a lot of guys went up and went to sleep outside. I did. How'd you solve the problem of finding a nice place to fall asleep at night? So I was wandering around. I'd never been inside the turret or on top. So I saw that life raft up there. I didn't see anybody around. So I went down, got a poncho, sat in that raft, felt pretty good. <laughs> so that's, that's where I stay. Your battle station was up in the crow's um, nest? Um, was up where we could see everything in case uh, Japanese started firing at us. So I was a, an apprentice or, or a striker, a gunner's mate. All you do is maintenance on those ships and on those guns. Talk about the end of the war. What was it like when this announcement came? It was hard to believe. So some guy came down from the bridge. I just heard we dropped a bomb on Japan. And I thought, this guy must be full of crap. So the next thing you know, over the PA system, we dropped what they called an atomic bomb. I had no vision of a bomb doing this much. And we got up one day at near the end of the war. I was on the searchlight and, and we could see everything around us. Every ship as far as you could see was the United States ship. It was really great because uh, we, we used to worry about getting up and uh, seeing Japanese ships. So it was the ending of the war, you knew it. You know, up until this day, I still miss the Navy. You know, I guess people think I'm crazy. If I was younger, I'd volunteer again. I'd do the same thing all over.